Well, lots of things actually inspired me to write that proposal, one of which was the, um, the interaction I would always have with the kids over there. And I mean, although, so it's, it's my hometown. Well, sort of like where I grew up, where my father grew up. And it's a largely Hindu populated town. And so apparently you would not see anything um, physically violent going on in that town or even in the suburbs of that town. But you would definitely see the subtle segregation of neighborhoods, sudden, a subtle segregation of playgrounds or even the schools most of the times. Like, again, it happened in my own family, in the friends' families, where they, the Muslim families took out their kids from certain schools because the administration was Hindu and vice versa. You know, they're just, there is this unspoken, hidden fear which is there. And in order for it to not really culminate into something tragic, which I've been seeing pretty, you know, it, it's pretty rampant in uh, the other parts of the country, I thought that it would be, it would be wise to kind of try to nip it in the bud. And these were always the thoughts, but then that this one summer, around two years ago, when I interacted with a few students and they were just like, I mean, I was asking them questions about their friends because, I mean, you know, you go into a town where you know there's, there is a large Hindu population. So it's just, it is not possible for Muslim kids or Hindu kids to not be together or to not be friends with each other. Because I see, I saw them playing. I had, I myself had, had lots of Hindu friends over there. And, but the responses I got were pretty terrible. I mean, because, you know, some of the kids went so far as to saying that, Allah didn't like them, so he made them Hindus. And so if we continue being friends, Allah will stop liking me too. I mean, all these things that were, it was pretty clear that they're learning these things from somewhere. And it was hard for me to kind of pinpoint or put my finger on where exactly is this hatred coming from? I mean, is it from the families? Is it from the mosques they attend? I mean, madrasas are the religious schools that, that they attend, or is it schools per se, the teachers? I mean, what exactly is going on? And although I could not put my finger at where the at, at the direction from which this hatred was flowing from, I, I knew for a fact that they're learning it from somewhere. They're learning to hate. And in my mind, I was like, okay, if they can learn to hate, they can very well also learn to love. And I just started thinking about what could possibly be done. And I reached out to a couple of organizations, of course, didn't get any positive response from any of them. And I was pretty heartbroken. <laughs> but then... Um, UNAI and Unhate announced this diversity contest and I was very sure that probably it was going to happen to me again like you know they would reject it or that they would not accept it or something would come up but it got accepted and um, and then it was just like okay now I have to do it and so the the project actually consists of three steps one of which um, is the designing of a syllabus and I have actually I've been calling it secular syllabus for the lack of a better word but that syllabus is basically uh, it comprises of um, passages from the holy scriptures and from Gita, Quran, Bible and although there there is there is there are not many Christians in uh, rural areas of sin but you know it just does not do any harm to incorporate that as well in the, into the syllabus and like making them see the similarities or basically the focus is to focus on similarities and um, it also has uh, lots of hypothetical scenarios where th those case studies where people would be basically encouraged to think critically and that's I think one of the major factors why we have this inflow of this just one sort of thought is because we ban the counter thought we, we don't encourage Critically think, critical thinking, we don't encourage questioning anything. We're just like fed all the fabricated stuff, be it historical or political lies or anything, and then we just expect our kids to grow up. Um, and then we raise a generation that just hates everyone, um, but that is xenophobic, that is, um, that is just, you know, that has brains the size of a pea. And so, um, it's really problematic and I thought, I mean, I, of course I was not planning on creating, the, I did, do not have a magical wound unfortunately and I do. I was not planning to 
address all the issues at once but I mean I knew that the syllabus might do something and so might as well just try to fix some errors that um, have been there since the inception of this country so I um, managed to do that too but then I also felt that I come from a land and I'm talking about my province only um, that is so culturally rich I mean in terms of literature in terms of you know um, poetry in terms of secular ideas and we've, we've had poets who had had Socratic thoughts and Socratic writings and people no longer pay attention to that and pe people no longer read that and um, and so I tried to bring that all back in, into the still I mean I tried to revive that that Sufism we call it and because it's a, it's, a, it's a land of Sufism and I grew up hearing these terms from my um, parents and from my parents friends and you know so I just felt obliged to to do something about the revival of that whole tradition because it was dying and I did not want Sufism to be replaced by uh, the epidemic of intolerance and religiosity that's going on around the country so to curb that um, violent thought I decided to kind of you know expose the kids to a different side of story and save them from you know what they what the Nigerian author would call the single story so this time it was a, to tackle the single story of hatred and violence with um, with the you know a, a change in the narrative and um, I there I've, I've had lots of wonderful volunteers from um, most of um, Harvard Harvard School of Education lots of my friends from Agnes Scott and um, you know a couple other volunteers as well I interviewed a few of them from Pakistan too but um, most of them were available to work only on the site um, during the workshop so you know I was just I was fine working on the syllabus by myself with the help of other volunteers and and then the second part of the project was to because I mean you know no matter what you do with the kids at the end of the day they have to go back to their parents and if that's where they're learning it all from then you know it's just you need to do something about it 